Hi there. Welcome to this another episode of Scenario Based Power BI Interview Question and Answers. In this episode, we are going to discuss some of the most important questions that your interviewer may ask you in your interview. So if you would like to know more, please stay tuned with me till the end of this video and I'm going to let you know everything about it. Before we move further, if you are over here for the very first time, please consider subscribing this channel and hit the bell icon so that you always stay updated with our latest videos and updates. Now, moving forward, the very first question your interviewer may ask you, what are strategies you would employ to optimize the performance of a Power BI reports experiencing slow query performance? Well, there can be a lot of scenarios when your Power BI reports is performing slow. That can be due to your DEX queries, that can be because of huge amount of data, that can be because of poor data modeling, or that can be because of using a lot of visualizations over there. So you have to improve first your back end, then come to the front end. As you can see on this on your screen that there is a performance analyzer. This is a tool which is in built in Microsoft Power BI desktop, and this is gonna help you out to check how long your visual or text queries are taking. If your visuals are taking a lot of time, then you may consider to switch these visuals with alternate visuals. Also, always use certified Power BI custom visuals if you have to use it. Otherwise, I'll suggest you to stick with the default visuals in Microsoft Power BI Desktop. Now, coming to the backend part. At backend, there can be enormous steps that you can take. First of all, start with optimizing your data source. If your data source is a relational database or maybe semi-structured database, maybe you would like to create over there indexing, etc. Once it's done, check the data types as well. That is very important. And another, the most important part is that please keep your keys as an integer because integer data type works very well with Microsoft Power BI Desktop for the keys. And now coming to the relationship and data modeling, that is another very important part that you must pay attention. Remove all the many-to-many -many relationships from there. There should be no many-to-many -many relationship. Also, you should focus only on star schema. Your data model should be in star schema. You should have one fact table, then all other dimension tables around it. If you would like to know more about data modeling, please check the link in the description section. I have already created a dedicated video on that too. Now, once you do all these, once you check all the relationship and please don't take it for granted that you cannot have more than one fact table you can have. In one, in exceptional cases, you may also have many to many relationship, but also don't consider this as for granted that you have to have many to many. No, just remove it. Exception keys are always there, but please try to remove all those. Once your data model is really good, then follow the Power BI best practices where you have to keep at most 10 visuals on one page. And also remember that everything on the page that you're going to put or the design page in Microsoft Power BI Desktop that counts as a visual. So try to minimize them. Now I'm going to show you something very important. So please do check this link as well in the description section. You can see over there that Microsoft provides the optimization guide for Power BI. Over here, you are going to find everything that you need to consider. You may also need to consider to put your fact tables in the direct query mode and import the data from all the dimension tables. Not only that, you can also create the hybrid tables. That means in the same table, you can have direct query as well as import. So there are lots of optimization ways that you can do that. Once you are going to deal with huge amount of data, you are going to need that. So please start applying these best practices as well as optimization steps and your reports are going to run perfectly fine over there. Now, moving back over here, the second question would be, how would you visualize geographic sales data and provide location based insight using maps in Power BI? Microsoft Power BI has inbuilt maps as part of visualization, so you can use them. And you can also use the tool tips on the base on that. So there are certain steps which you can see over here. And now I'm gonna show you one example. One of the report from the Microsoft documentation over here, you can see that how you can see the forecast by location and also how you can visualize your regional sales over there. So try to use that and to consider the limitation of the number of data points you can have in the visualization. You can also consider using Azure Maps visualization over there. I have already created the video, so I'll request you to go and check on our YouTube channel. You would find that one. Now, moving forward, there can be another question. How would you achieve creating a dynamic dashboard in Power BI that allows users to select specific time period and regions for analysis? Well, guys, this is very simple. If you consider this question, and I'm also assuming over here that you have at least three to four years of experience in Power BI. 
If you have to analyze specific time, then you can use the date slicer over there. You can also convert into between, or also you can have two slicers, one for date only, one for time only. So that's how you can do that. But not only that, if you have to use the regions for, for that, you can use the another slicer over there. One of the example you can see on your screen. So please pause the screen and have a look and let me know if you have any question or concern in the comment section. Moving forward, how can you incorporate external data sources into your Power BI report to compare your organizational performance against industry benchmarks? Well, if you have industry data and you have external source data, then definitely you can bring those data into your Power BI report. Not only that, you can also collaborate with the external stakeholders data over there. So in the Power BI tenant settings, there is a setting when you can collaborate with the external vendors over there. If I'm going to take you on this, then you have to just type over here how to get external vendor data in power bi so once you do that you will see that how to connect to your data in your third party vendor so this is just a fabric community link so you would get it over there that how you can do that but i'm not looking for this i'm looking for microsoft documentation which is over here distribute power BI campaign to external guests using microsoft intra b2b so this is the way that you can do that and in your power bi tenant also you have to enable this setting I'm also gonna provide this link in the description, so please don't forget to check that out. Now coming again over here, that the next question your interviewer may ask you that how you can build a Power BI solution that provides timely insights with real-time updates of first streaming data. Microsoft has a feature that you can create real-time dashboards for there. And if you will see this documentation over here, real-time streaming in Power BI, you would get to know how you can do that. So you can create your streaming semantic model over there and you would get a couple of options over there that you want to get it using API, Azure Stream or PubNub. I have also created one dedicated video for you already. So if you are following us, then you already know that how we can do the real-time data analytics with Power BI. So please do check this video as well as Microsoft documentation to get more details over there. Basically, you have to go on your Power BI dashboard. There you have to create the source and you have to also apply some of the summarization mechanism over there how you would like to summarize the data and then you can push it over here to the dashboard that's how you can create your real-time dashboard in microsoft power bi but please do remember that if your interviewer is asking to create on power bi desktop that is not possible you cannot do it on power bi desktop or power bi report you have to use power bi dashboard and always note that there is a difference between microsoft power bi dashboard and microsoft power bi report dashboard is just one page where you have all the summarization or you are telling a story however report is what you generate using microsoft power bi desktop app now also do remember that power bi dashboard can only be created in microsoft power bi service this is it guys for this video if you would like to know more please comment in the comment section if you have any question concern please do let us know if you are looking for any Microsoft Power BI, Microsoft Fabric training programs, connect with us. Also, any of the certifications such as DP500, DP600, PL300, please do let us know. In case you are looking for any of the consulting services or if you are looking for career guidance, then also you can connect with us. Lastly, please consider joining our channel because there is a lot of very dedicated content and we are also going to publish soon a lot of more courses over there, specially tailored for your own needs. If you are going to join our channel, that is going to support us to create more content for you. Till next time guys, keep learning and I'm going to see you in the next video.